What's up, my friend? Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to talk about how we can create effective orchestral transitions. So this is a big, big topic and question that I get a lot of the time from my students. And I thought I would use my Disney Orchestra medley as an example, as a case study, because, you know, we have uh, a bunch of these classics from Disney through the repertoire put together. And not only did I have to consider the arrangement for each of the individual songs, but how to actually link them up together using different transitions. And this was a lot, a lot of fun. So I'm gonna share with you the two ways to think about transitions, how to approach them. And then by the end, you should have some solid ideas for applying to your own transition. So I can't wait to get into it. Uh, but before we do that, I wanna give you access to my on-demand workshop called the Complete Composers Framework. If you're a composer, an orchestrator, mixing engineer, whatever have you, um, I would love to give you access to this. This. It goes through the step-by-step -step process of how to come up with your initial idea to the final polished master. I'll share with you tips and tricks for actually going from one step to another. I'll also share with you my virtual orchestration roadmap, which is my three-step process for approaching uh, your orchestral mock-ups every single time. And it's super valuable. It's jam-packed with good stuff, and I want to give it to you totally free. So if you click the first link in the box below, you can get access to that. Just simply register for it, and I'll send it to you right away, and you can watch it anytime you like. Uh, so without the, uh, further ado, let's kind of jump in. And again, transitions are a big, big deal because the, the two ways we can think about it really do kind of affect the method at which we, we create our transition. So the first one is an intentional sort of transition. And the second one is a natural transition. So intentional transitions and natural transitions. In other words, you could say transitions that are meant to be noticed and trans transitions that are not meant to be noticed, okay? So the intentional ones are the ones that are meant to be noticed. They serve a really deliberate purpose in the piece of music, whereas the natural transitions simply lead us from one place to another, and we don't even notice it, right? So in this track, there are plenty of plenty of transitions, and let me just go through them one at a time. So from A Whole New World, uh, let's have a listen to the end of this and listen to how it transitions into Go the Distance from Hercules. Maybe I'll go back a little bit further, actually. So. so this is the second half of the verse. So think about which type of transition this is, intentional or natural. So the answer, for me at least, was a natural transition. I wanted to be able to go from one track to the other without any big bumps. I simply wanted to go from the verse of A Whole New World into the chorus of Go With The Distance. So the approach meant that I didn't want to pull out any of the instrumentation. I wanted to maintain the flow, keep the momentum going, and the instrumentation nice and full and rich. If we take a look here, you can kind of see that's the case. So we have the MIDI and the strings kind of going from one section to another. We add in some basses and some layering stuff and go the distance. But overall, a lot of the instrumentation is pretty, uh, pretty like it translates pretty easily from track to track. I also put both songs in, um, in the same key, right? So a whole new world in F major and go the distance in F major as well. So you can hear how it transitions pretty seamlessly because the overall key is exactly the same. And the tempo was exactly the same. I didn't change anything there. Like I kept the momentum the same. So overall, it was pretty simple. Yes, we changed the instrumentation of the melody. It went from like the flute to the violin. So that was a little bit of a change there. That also helped signify that we're moving to a new track. But um, in terms of the actual transitional elements, we have like a cymbal crash, cymbal roll and crash. Right, so it rolls into, into that, that transition, and then it crashes. And the other thing I used was a string run as well. So go just before this. Sorry, let me see where it actually comes in here. Oh, okay. I did it up here, actually. And that is actually, I think it's the orchestral string runs from orchestral tools. I just used one of the runs transitions patches and basically just played it in there. Because um, I ended on the B flat there because the melody lands on a C. So it basically was an ascending F major scale up to the B flat, but then the melody, the downbeat hits right on the C. So it, it goes directly to the melody note there. 
Um, so that's the first transition there. It's a natural transition and you're re not really meant to notice it. It's just meant to connect you from one section to the other very seamlessly. And I did that by, again, keeping the momentum, the same tempo, the same key, um, the same as more or less instrumentation, just changing up the melodic instrumentation. Uh, let's have a listen to the end of Go The Distance into how uh, into When She Loved Me. Actually, so maybe I'll go a little further back here. Let's go maybe here. So the end of the chorus here. I will go the distance. And then that's when when she loved me starts. So for me, this is kind of a blend of intentional and natural. I did want the transition to feel pretty natural, like it's leading us away from the energy from go the distance because it's more of a full sound. But I wanted to gradually go into a, a lesser energy because I knew when she loved me, I just wanted the solo English horn and the piano, right? So I wanted to take our time and lead away from it with a chord progression that was a little bit different. But it was intentional as well because it's this is not really something that you hear. Um, in, in the songs themselves, right? So I kind of wanted to segue away from it intentionally, but also naturally. So from the five, we actually go to the flat six, and now we visit the key of A flat really quickly to D flat, and then G minor to C major, which is the two to the five in F major, because When She Loved Me is an F major. So in this case, I took a little bit more time with the transition, right? I kind of created an outro, if you will, that led us to this half cadence, everything cut off. So then it gave the English horn room to breathe and then come in. And you can see that's when it comes in here with those breath noises at the, at the very bottom. Okay. And then let's have a listen to the end of this song, When She Loved Me. So when she loved me, then everything builds here. So here it's kind of a similar approach to uh, the transition between the first two songs. I'm still maintaining the same key from When She Loved Me to Can You Feel the Love Tonight. And the only thing that's really changing is some crescendoing instrumentation into uh, the latter song. So they're on the F major chord right here, the one, and then to five. Da, 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 da. And then we go into when she, or Can You Feel the Love Tonight in a very smooth manner, right? So for this one was more of a, a natural transition as well. And then same, another natural transition here from Can You Feel the Love Tonight to Let It Go. Da -da -da. Right, again, we're changing the instrumentation and the melody. We're going to the trumpets and uh, that's kind of carrying the theme forward. But overall, the instrumentation is pretty similar across these two songs, as you can see. So lots of strings here. Uh, so the clarinet, contrabassoon, um, horns providing the pad in the middle, some drums to come in. So that's kind of the new element in Let It Go. I still wanted to give it a little bit of a modern touch through the percussion. And some choir as well in the middle. So it feels a little bit more anthemic, right? But the transition itself is relatively natural. It just kind of crescendos into it. Now, the this transition from Let It Go to For the First Time in Forever is very intentional. So have a listen to this one. Now we prepare. And then it just suddenly bursts into, you know, the, the for the first time in forever. Um, this one was because like I want I knew I wanted the mood of this medley to completely change, basically. I wanted it to be very active compared to the slightly more laid back vibe of the previous songs. So here I really kind of pulled back a little bit. The flute plays, the cold never bothered me anyway. And then we basically have the woodwinds holding a little bit. There's also a string tremble that comes in before that string run up to the very top. So the energy goes from a zero up to like a 10, just like that, right? In that one bar. So I wanted to increase the excitement and then they start playing shorts and staccatos. And that's where you can see here. Right, so they're playing that rhythm there, and then the Joshua Bell violin comes in with the melody. Now 
Then we have another natural transition at the end here. So same type of vibe for these two songs. Something's never changed from Frozen 2. Right. So one more time. It'll be totally strange. Why am I so ready for this change? Lead into a crescendo. And then the next song starts basically. So a pretty natural transition. I didn't want any bumps or anything like that. I didn't really want the 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 transition really to be noticed. Um, it's not really the star of the show there. So that was the whole point there. I want it to be nice and seamless. And then at the end of this, let's see. So on to you. Now this is more of an intentional transition. So taking my time here, going between the one and the four chords, but now go up to the five chord in C major. Hold, break, change the vibe completely. Right? So now we're pulling away, we're decreasing the instrumentation, we're slowing down the tempo, pulling away, and then that gives a lot of space for when you wish upon to come up, when you wish upon a star to come in um in, in a in a smooth natural way, right? Same ideas here for Colors of the Wind and Reflection. These are pretty natural transitions. You can hear that in the official uh, video. And then one more natural transition I just want to show you here at the end of Beauty and the Beast. Right, so that, that, there's that transition there, right? So I did want see the light to be a little bit faster because to, to kind of <clears throat> uh, mimic the original song a little bit more, it, it kind of benefited from a little faster of a tempo. So at the end of da, 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 we're in the key of E flat major and I wanted to maintain that same key for see the light. So that helps it uh, be seamless for sure. And then the overall instrumentation is pretty similar as well. We do add in a couple more string parts, but overall the instrumentation is pretty similar. Still full, still rich using brass and woodwinds and stuff like that. So right now the cellos have the main melody. The counter melody, and then we go directly into I see, uh, see the light. So yeah. I hope that kind of makes sense. The overall idea is transitions you can think about in, in two main ways, right? There's intentional transitions, ones that you really want to serve um, a deliberate purpose. Like, do you, you do you want them to be noticed, right? So you might swap out instrumentation, you might really slow it down, you might really speed it up, you might use filters. It really doesn't matter, but do it in a way that still feels like it's connecting two songs together, but it has its own kind of special touch. Whereas natural transitions should happen in a very smooth, seamless, unnoticeable way. And most of the times in songs, you kind of want to go with that approach because you don't really want to take the spotlight away from the more important sections like the choruses or even the verses. Transitions should simply serve as a bridging point between two different sections, right? So that comes down ultimately to maintaining the instrumentation in a pretty similar manner, uh, maintaining the tempo if you can, the keys, of course, that always helps if you have the two of the same key, even if it's a, if it's a different song, then you can still maintain that it uh, have that connective tissue there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting way to, to play with transitions. I think there's so many different possibilities, but these are, these, I just wanted to show you an example using this medley. And uh, some people had commented on the original video that they enjoyed the transition. So I thought it was worth maybe covering here a little bit deeper in, in this video. So let me know if you have any questions about that. Um, I, I know transitions can be a little bit tricky, but using instrumentation that kind of leads into the next section in, in a complimentary way for the latter song that you're trying to get to. You don't want it to feel super sudden or unnatural, right? If you're going for that more seamless approach, then use instrumentation that leads into that, that next song. Maybe use crescendoing sort of articulations or decrescendo articulations like that come away from it um, from one song to the next. That can certainly help as well. But uh, just play around with it. You kind of just need to practice it and get your fingers into the instruments and just hear how that works for the piece of music. At the end of the day, we're just trying to serve the piece of music and that's all that really, really matters. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Again, if you want to check out the on-demand workshop called the Complete Composers Framework, I would love to give it to you totally free. 
just click the first link in the box below. And again, it goes through the step-by-step -step process from the initial idea to the completed final master, plus my virtual orchestration roadmap, which covers my step-by-step -step process for approaching my orchestral mockups every single time I work. It's been super valuable for my existing students. I would love to give it to you as well. And you can check it out again, totally free as a gift for watching this video today. Thank you so much. I, I, uh, I'll see you in the next one and uh, take it easy. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.